Hi everyone, my name is Mateus, and today we're going to talk about video games. Uncharted, the legacy of Thieves Collection is seemingly PlayStation's weakest first-party PC launch so far, according to Steam Data. Independent data tracker Steam Database suggests that the collection attracted a peak player count of 10,851 this weekend, which is significantly lower than PlayStation's other first-party PC games managed and not enough for a place within Steam's top 100. In comparison, Horizon Zero Dawn debuted on Steam to a peak of around 56,000 players, and Spider-Man attracted around 66,000. God of War managed an even higher peak of around 73,000 players and Days Gone attracted around 27,000 on its release weekend. It's possible Uncharted has been affected by debuting during a more competitive release period than Sony's other PC titles, which released during quieter periods of the year. Legacy of Thieves Collection, which was first released for PlayStation 5 earlier this year, contains remasters of PS4 titles Uncharted 4 and its expansion The Lost Legacy. CI Games has detailed its plans for the next five years, sharing a roadmap with investors in which it has revealed that it is working on two new games. CI's internal underdog studio, which has been responsible for the Sniper Ghost Warrior series of games, will helm a premium, multiplayer PvE tactical shooter that is codenamed Project Scorpio and is being designed as a live service title. The company's last Sniper Ghost Warrior game, Contracts 2, was released back in 2021 and was set in Quammer, a fictional Middle East location. Project Survive, CI's entry in the survival genre, is being developed by Batfields, an external partner based in the Czech Republic. Sniper Ghost Warrior will also receive a new entry, with that sequel being developed by another external studio alongside Underdog Studio. Finally, CI Games plans to expand its portfolio with new franchises. The company plans to work with external partners to leverage its internal and external IP, diversifying these efforts into new areas of entertainment. Over the last three years, CI Games has gone through a major change, transitioning from a Polish-centric operation to become a developer and publisher with a truly pan-European management and team structure, Group CEO Marek Tominski said in a statement. With our evolved global strategy and roadmap focused on premium console and PC content we are ensuring continued success and future growth for the business. Bethesda has announced that Fallout 4 is coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S with an official next-generation update next year. As part of the Fallout 25th anniversary celebration, Bethesda released a blog post that announced the long-awaited free update that is also coming to PC. Arriving eight years after Fallout 4 was first released, the update includes a performance mode that allows for higher frame rates, a quality mode for 4K graphics, plus bug fixes and more Creation Club content, Bethesda's official mod support. The developer didn't reveal a specific release date or window for Fallout 4's next-gen update, nor did it give a full list of features, but it will also likely include console-specific upgrades such as the use of PlayStation 5's haptic feedback. Disco Elysium's lead game designer Robert Kurvitz has filed a lawsuit against developer ZA-UM. Earlier this month, a number of key members of the development team confirmed they were no longer working at the studio. The reason for dissolving the cultural organization is that it no longer represents the ethos it was founded on, wrote founding member of the ZA-UM Cultural Association Martin Luiga. People and ideas are meant to be eternal, organizations may well be temporary. Luiga later alleged that some team members were fired on false premises. As Tech News Space reports, Kurvitz has filed a lawsuit with the Estonian court against ZA-UM on behalf of his own company Telomer O. The hearing will take place on November 28, but it's unknown what this will entail. Kotaku AU has corroborated with a screenshot from the Estonian Ministry of Justice's website Riigi Tiataja. Their Telomer O has filed an application to obtain information and review documents. 
Luiga has also seemingly confirmed the news by sharing the story by Tech News Space. When a fan asked how Luiga could be supported, he responded, I will let you know should such an opportunity arise. There has since been speculation the lawsuit could be an attempt to wrestle control of the rights for a potential Disco Elysium sequel, but this is conjecture. Steam has reached a new milestone, with the number of concurrent users on the platform hitting 30 million this weekend. The record occurred on Sunday, with Valve's platform reaching an all-time high of 30,024,670 concurrent users online, according to Steam's charts. As reported by PC Gamer, the platform has grown exponentially in recent years, with the publication noting that it took 14 years for Steam to grow to 15 million concurrent users, but only 5 to reach the following 15 million. Prior to Valve publishing CCU numbers, data platform Steam Database, which also recorded an all-time high over 30 million on Sunday, was the reference. Back in November 2021, Steam Database reported that Steam had reached 27 million CCU. Steam Database reported that out of the 30 plus million people using the platform on Sunday, August 5th million were in-game. Square Enix could be hinting at a new Parasite Eve project, as it has filed a new trademark in Japan. Spotted by Jamatsu, Square Enix trademarked the name, Symbiogenesis, which is the process where two separate organisms merge to form a single new one. This process is the foundation for Parasite Eve story. It's currently unknown whether a new Parasite Eve game from Square Enix would be a brand new entry or just a port of older titles. It's also possible that Square Enix won't be doing anything with the Parasite Eve franchise either. Parasite Eve is based on the 1995 Japanese horror novel by Hideaki Sena and was adapted into the Parasite Eve video game in 1998 for the original PlayStation. Parasite Eve 2 followed shortly after in 1999, and the third birthday was released for the PlayStation Portable in 2010. While fans could be getting a mobile spin-off after all despite reports claiming it had been cancelled after a disagreement with Chinese company NetEase. Earlier this year, a report from Bloomberg claimed that a mobile WoW MRPG had been scrapped despite being in development for over three years with NetEase disbanding a team of over 100 developers. Now, newly surfaced job listings for an unannounced Warcraft mobile project has brought new life to fans hoping for a new version of Warcraft. In total, four job listings on Blizzard's site indicate that the mobile project is still being worked on with most of the jobs focusing on the game's characters. Listings for a senior character concept artist, mid-senior environment concept artist, senior principal 3D character artist, and senior pipeline technical artist are available. Of note, the original listing states, Blizzard is looking for a highly motivated and talented character concept artist to join a new Warcraft mobile project. In this role, you will bring all forms of characters and creatures to life and push our project's visual fidelity. Importantly, this will include giving direction on art assets produced by external partners, thus previous experience working with external artists is highly desired. The external partners portion could imply that the NetEase assets are still getting used, meaning the project's three years of development time aren't being completely scrapped. Originally codenamed Neptune, the mobile MMORPG was reportedly planned to take place in the same universe as WoW, but during a different time period. Blizzard has yet to comment on this game yet, but considering it's not yet announced, hopefully, they'll have something share sooner as opposed to later. Sony appears to have made a change to its PS Plus service, making it no longer possible to view the exact date a game will be removed from the service. The last chance to play tab is still part of the home page, viewed by scrolling down a fair bit on PS5, but buttoning through to the games there no longer displays an expiry date. At the moment, Res Infinite on PS4 is part of the last chance to play section. However, if you click through to where you can download the game, there's no expiry date listed. This means there's no way of knowing how much time you have left to play the title, 
it could still stick around for a few weeks or be gone by tomorrow. It's also worth noting Sony doesn't detail upcoming expiry dates in its monthly PlayStation blog posts either. While PS Plus Essential games are always available for roughly one month, the length of time something is part of PS Plus Extra or PS Plus Premium is entirely up in the air. That's all the news for today, Tuesday, October 25, 2022. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. The links to all the subjects discussed in this video are available in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.